Hello, Kit fans, and welcome back to the Talking Kit podcast, which is a podcast for football kit fanatics made by three football kit fanatics. I'm one of your hosts, Double A, and as always, my right hand man, the uh, Brian Kidd to my Fergie, the Chalk to my cheese. I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I didn't. I didn't write anything, James. This is off. Well, one day you will get that intro spot on as well. But I've uh, right one. If I wrote one. Yeah, I think it would sound a lot. Better. Obviously, nice it's James. Man. You okay, pal? Yes, I'm good. Obviously, Sean's not here again. But you know, we we hold the fort. We go again, and um, <laughs> we do. We do a sneaky looking forward to this one. Yes, no, it's going to be a good episode. It's someone we've wanted to get on for a little bit, so we've got a guest coming on. Um, but no, how are you? Are you okay? Fresh from doing uh, match week eight of the strip down. Yes, did the strip down yesterday evening, so that'll give people an idea of when we recorded this. A uh, couple yeah. of gigs in the week. I'm full of the old Sir Alex uh, Lurgerson, as you can probably hear. A um, bit bunged up, mate, full of a cold. But it's not it's not COVID, uh, even though this is socially distanced. But no, um, I'm all right. I'm doing all right. What about you? I'm good, mate. I'm all right. You know, I'm actually okay. Uh, working a lot at the minute, but it's nice to be doing another um, another main pod. It sounds it's 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 always exciting to do a main pod, especially now we're getting guests on as well. And it was it doesn't feel that long ago since we did episode five with the team of our lives guys. So yes, it's nice to be getting into a bit of a run now and getting um. A nice run of guessing and different kind of guests with different perspectives on teams and kits and more focused on teams. The vet this is our first podcast where we're just focusing on one team. Bit of a weird yeah. team to, to focus mm. on first. Hence my outfit. Out. I'm surprised you've not doubled up with me on this one, just you know, to well, ward it away. It's like garlic for vampires and stuff. Well, if if you're watching the the, vi- the video podcast, you will see I've kind of gone Brazil heavy, Ronaldo shirt. Full of Brazil shirts, Santos and Portuguese, AT and whatever. I've just gone Brazil today. Um, I've doubled up, United. but you've let me down. What can I do? Yeah, well, a bit sick of United. And it looks better anyway. We're not sticking to the same old. Oh. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. But this guy, you know, the guest is so excited to come on. He was meant to come on episode eight and he's that excited. We bumped him up because I think if he'd waited any longer, he would have burst, to be honest with you. So, um, but no, I'm glad you're doing all right. Like I say, you said, um, Sean's not about, but he will be back soon. And he kind of jumps in for one pod and then buggered off again. So it's one of them, isn't it? But he will be back. He will be back. But you enjoyed yeah. the ship down yesterday. It's, I did enjoy the ship good. down. Um, but no, just talking of Sean, I think he, he will um he will add another dimension to us. It's almost like we're missing the uh there's there's that there's a three man midfield and we're missing that one person, but he'll be back. But no, the strip down was good. Every Friday, pre Premier League fixtures, we will have a strip down. If it's not myself, it'll be you, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, people get on that on the YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel to check that out. It's our live show that we do previewing the Premier League games. We have a football kit twist, as you could imagine, here on Talking Kit. So, yeah, now we've uh, got it reintroduced, like we don't talk every day anyway. Um, Let's um, get our guest on. Um, So, yeah, it's someone that we are quite, you know, we've We've dealt with a lot over the last couple of months, being new to the sort of, you know, podcast, um, football, community game. This guy's kind of welcomed us both with open arms. Um, I got involved with some of their sort of um, live streams, sort of um, watch-alongs during the Euros, which I fully enjoyed. It's a great channel, and he catered to um, to every single football team, pretty much. Um, he's a massive Man City fan. And he, like I say, he's one of the co-founders of Never a Foul. Check them out on YouTube. They are great channels. I'm sure he will talk a lot about it. So, yeah, it's the one. It's the only. It's Mr. Daps, MCFC, <laughs> in the building. And he's suddenly all got relaxed. All of a sudden. <laughs> How are we doing, bro? Like, are you okay? Uh, it's almost like yeah. a picture of casting couch now. What's what's going on? I don't now? know, yeah. I'm waiting for He's waiting, ready to come in. Have you got Ollie? Oh, like, he's, 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 he's having a laugh, isn't he? He's, he's, we brought him on. And this is what he's doing straight away. He couldn't help himself, could he? he? Couldn't help himself. Hi guys. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> it's it's Ollie. Yeah, we don't need to talk about him. That's um, done with. What a beautiful face, right? A face only a mother could love at this time. There you go. I'll get rid of him. I'll get rid of him for you. Thank you very much. So, how are we doing, Daps? You okay? I'm good. I'm great. Never yeah. felt more like singing the blues. 
City win, United lose. Oh, City. You got me singing the blues. You know what? There couldn't have been a worse time, obviously. If you listen to this, this is just after Manchester United got hammered by Leicester 4 2. So, obviously, we had this plan for a few a week or so for that to come on this, on this episode. And it is obviously going to be an episode focused on Manchester City, which doesn't make great timing. Great for you, not so much for me and James, which is why I'm not wearing anything Manchester United related today. It's, so, yeah, like, it's probably just I, as well going down, down memory lane, to be honest, isn't it? Where City were probably not as high high flyers, but yeah. we'll go we'll go over that. Um, I noticed that when you, when you said um, <laughs> I went heavy with Brazil, Ronaldo. <laughs> was that was that planned or? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. He's got Fred um, on the back of most of those shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I definitely haven't on all that. Oh, here we go again. Well, I mean, I'm glad you're wearing. I'm glad you're wearing your team's colours. Do you want to explain what it is you're wearing? Um, to people it's a Manchester City shirt. Um, it's 2019, 2020 uh, season. We did the domestic treble. Um, Still haven't done the still haven't done the proper treble. Yeah. That sounds like a, on a charge sheet, that doesn't it? The domestic treble. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine he's done a few domestic trebles. Yeah, he, he's been sent down. He did the domestic treble on his missus. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds more like the casting couch thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, so yeah, that's, before we get into sort of talking city, do you want to just give the people, you know, the people listening and watching a bit of a rundown of who you are and what you do kind of because it's, it's an interesting story definitely and one people should be getting involved in because i have <laughs> what i do <laughs> don't get involved in everything um so what never fell i presume yeah of course yeah so um yeah so we i am one of the co-founders of never fell alongside um ty hold tight ty from trafford tunnel uh soups who does Chew the fat with me, look out show with me, and also all of the graphics, every single bit of the graphics. Honestly, the sickest graphic designer you'll ever come across. And then, of course, CT Chris, who uh, you had the honor of meeting last week. I did, yeah. Um, yeah. Very passionate Arsenal fan. Uh, very Don't proud you. of the very proud of the uh, Invincible era. And yeah, he will tell you about some it. Deluded, some might say, but hey, that's us. One guy's opinion. <laughs> and um, yeah, so never a foul. It is um, a, a, a YouTube fan channel for fans. And um, yeah, we've, we've kind of been going for probably about 13 months now. Um, started a year ago where we had no idea what we were doing. Um, in here, it was supposed to be one, one day a week in here, just meeting up and talking about football. Um, and it's kind of just grown from there, really. Um, but yeah, one of the things I really want to see is all about connecting people to talk about football. And one of the real things I've been trying to focus on the last few weeks is not getting carried away and actually remembering it's all about if, if you don't enjoy doing it, don't do it. And if like my focus is to just keep enjoy doing it and not try and make it something that it wasn't. If it does become something that is big, great, but. I just want to keep enjoying meeting people, talking about football. And when I'm in a bad mood, I do podcasts and they make me happy. So That's what yeah. it's all about. That's what yeah, it's all about. Really. I, like, I, like, I like the fact you're one of these fans. You like, you like to play devil, devil's advocate. Start of start this season, it was all, no, we'll be lucky to get top four. We're, we're, no, we're not. We don't bought a striker. Look, oh, no, he's bought the wrong player. Fully knowing what we all know that Man City... No, you Man know City, what it is, though? It, like... I'd probably make out it is that, but it, it, there's two reasons I do it. Firstly, ultimately, to manage my own mental health, right? Because I grew up with City being crap, right? And I grew up around a lot of Arsenal fans, especially when I moved down here. And like, Mario, sorry, but I've got, I've got to say that I, I will always remember one game I went to watch uh, Arsenal v someone and Arsenal lost. I was due to go back to his house, have um, dinner with him and his missus and his kids. From the pub to the car to the drive home, not a word was said, right? Car door opened, walked in the house, shut the door, and I just go, I just drove home. And these times, I, you know, I didn't have a wife and child. I just drove home to my flat by my poor old self and, you know, probably had a microwave dinner instead of a banging, banging, 
Anyway, his missus messaged me saying, I take it you're not coming in. I said, oh, and I take it Arsenal lost. I said, I oh, did Mario. She said, he's just walked in the room and shut the door behind him. And when we started winning, right, it was like obviously amazing and because we're used to not winning anything. And then the season that we... The season that we were better than Liverpool, but the rest of the world th- wanted to praise how good Liverpool were, even though they didn't win the league that season. The last like three months, every weekend worrying if Liverpool were going to drop points, if City, and it hit me, I'm starting to become one of them that is letting football influence my life. When you grow up with your team being crap, football doesn't influence your life. When you start winning stuff, all of a sudden, it when you lose it's like and so I always like to have low expectations and and even though it's getting harder I've got that but also in me is the pessimist I'm a City fan I'm not an optimist I'm a pessimist and um I probably shouldn't be in the league because actually in the league for the last 10 years even when we start badly we end well but yeah I see something alarm bells ringing and so there's part that I'm looking after my my mental health. There's part that honestly, every season I forget how good we are, and then, and this season and then, it's actually come a bit earlier. We've actually are performing a bit better earlier. This time last year we were shit. We were really yeah. bad. You were terrible, oh. weren't you? Till about you had a massive 29 game unbeaten run, was it something like that? Is that what it was? I, I mean, I just yeah, remember. Yeah. In, I know, I know it's I know it was a high high number unbeaten run you went, didn't you? Tottenham, so Tottenham were eight points ahead of us at one point in like November time. But. It's ridiculous, isn't it? So, um, what we'll do is to start before we start talking about City fully and, and how you got supporting them and stuff like that. Uh, what we do is we do some quick fire questions centered around kits and we just like to give you know gauge what you like in terms of buying kits and stuff like that. So, uh, we've got seven Super questions. Down. Well, well, there's always that. Um, I'll say I'll kick it off. So, question number one: short or long sleeves? What would you go for? Short, always. Always for short okay. sleeves. Uh, I like the seat we're starting to do goalkeeper tops with short sleeves as well. Yeah, not a fan on a keeper. It's got to be long sleeve on a keeper for me. But... but don't you think the keeper ones are funny? Because remember when we were younger, the keeper were like you were putting on a, a Batman outfit. They had all sh- they had padding all in them and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the shorts as well. The shorts had a bit. Yeah, of yeah. The shorts had padding as well. Yeah. Um, second question: Stadium shirt or authentic shirt? So, what's your preference with that? Are the stadium are the stadium shirts are like the hundred pound ones? That's authentic. That's the authentic ones. Yeah, always, yeah. Okay. always. I'm not that deep into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, collar or no collar? No collar, but the shape of the collar is oh. important as well. Okay. Um, okay. Sponsor on a shirt, yes or no? <laughs> yes, but not like our third kit. <laughs> I agree. Um, one to 11 are squad numbers. That's a really good one. Um, I've never thought about that. How did they used to get players on the back of their shirts <laughs> every week? You have to change the number. <laughs> um, you didn't have names, did you? Just had one to eleven. It just used to be. A nah, you know what? It's squad numbers. Squad numbers. Yeah. Training shirts uh, or training jackets. Training jackets. Okay, and uh, finally, an online purchase or a charity shop find. I'd love to say the charity shop find, but it's an on, it's an it's an online purchase, or it's knowing someone that can get them on the cheap. Um, but but I'd love to do the charity thing. I guess you know what? Sometimes I walk past charity shops, and I think I should probably go and have a look after what I hear off of everyone else, not just with football shirts, with design and stuff as well. But I just I just think it will take me too long, and I won't find anything. And that's fair enough. That's have you actually enough. got some stills in there before them? Like um, I got, um, is it the Centenary Brazil? Uh, Brazil, Barcelona kit the other day? Yeah, you sure. got the, oh, no, the one you were wearing. Was, it was the 20 year, yeah, 20 year 20 anniversary. Year collaboration with Nike, yeah. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. I, I was commenting on it on one of the shows. 
Yeah, five pounds bargain. Yeah. Um, charity shop. I've not been that lucky. I found that's like a Sampdoria T-shirt that was quite rare for like five pounds. Other than that, I mean, I got this on like on eBay for fifty quid. It's got no Ronaldo on it and all that. So that's, that's probably the best bad. thing. It's hard, to, you know. The best ones you go to, they're all, they're all snapped up early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of those. Okay, so now you did some some good, good answers there, Daps. Um, you can continue on to the next round of the interview. Thank we'll you. carry on. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so we've got another little quiz coming up for you in a little bit, which should be fun. But obviously, like I said, you are a Manchester City fan. Obviously, the accent might throw people off. People might think you've only supported them since 2008, obviously. Um, it'll be, it'll be Newcastle next Newcastle season. Next season. <laughs> yeah. City fans have actually been tweeting stuff like I've always had a soft spot for Newcastle and stuff. And I've had to say, yeah. Are you joking? Tell me you're fucking joking. Don't you, that's as bad as Pep Guardiola asking fans to come to games. Don't do that. We don't need that. Don't attract any attention to us. Um but no, so um so yeah, the accent's a really interesting one because so I was I was born in Barnet, right? My mum's mum was from North London, my dad was from uh south hertfordshire um my dad's watford my real dad um i lived i lived in boreham woods till i was three then i moved up to poynton for two years poynton is i don't really know where it's like it's Poynton kind of like stockport way yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 well that explains why my dad was city to be fair. um so <laughs> yeah and then and then um yeah so my my stepdad who then who I, who I call dad but or I call dad he's passed away rest in peace um he he was city through and through and his dad was city his daughters are city my sisters uh whole family city um we lived point in for two years then we moved back down south for about four years then we moved back up to um initially Deansgate literally for about we lived next to um Alma Mike Baldwin's ex oh yeah okay oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we we stole a we stole a um post a few times just to see if it was anything saucy, but it really wasn't. Um, and then we moved to Sandbach and lived to Sandbach for till I was about fifteen or sixteen, and then moved back down south and lived here since. So yeah, um, I got bought Watford and City shirts till I was probably about five, um, and then it was just like I think my deep down my real dad knew. He didn't bother buying me shirts anymore because it was just there was no point. So, um, I was gonna yeah. say, like, you have got receipts, haven't you? You know, you can you can prove, oh, you hell yeah, you know, you're, long. you're not, um, fair weather fan, all about the money, as we are now. There we go. Oh, he's done it, <laughs> he's done it. You know what? <laughs> I, I can't believe how baggy that's the more I look at it, and it was bought like that as well. Well, that um, was just that back in the nineties. That's how you bought it because because you could yeah. have it for two seasons. You used to get it bigger because you were going to grow into it. Yeah, there was, so this, there was none of this like rotation of kits every season, was there? You well, know what? It, it, was, it, was, it was so nice then, wasn't it? Where you'd get and they yeah. do like the home would be like they'd overlap, wouldn't they? It would be like two seasons of the home, yeah. and then after then like the next year new away would be released and whatever yeah. else. Yeah, and yeah. um, so, the funny thing is, if you look at this, this is. <laughs> So if you look at like the names on the back, can you remember you used to be able to buy kits from like I'm trying to think what the what the um what the sports shops back then would have been, but you could buy kits where you do the names on the back yourself. JJB yeah. Sports and all those. Yeah, it would have been JJB. Um, JJB and Crew. It would have been from probably all sports. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, and like if you look at how faint the rustler is on the picture in the top right, it's because my mum had basically done that herself. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it was it was funny because when I lived down when we first moved back down south, um, can you remember? Can you guys? I don't know exactly your ages. Can you lot remember Clinton Cards? Oh yeah, just course, outside, yeah. Und, underneath the uh, food courts on the Arndale. Yeah, yeah. 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 And oh, downstairs, yeah. they used to have a City and United section. Yeah, yeah, I remember So that. whenever I'd, we'd come back, I'd be hitting there up to get the shirts and whatever. Or I'd have to get, because you couldn't get a City shirt down here for shit at all. Nothing. Um, like, no, I'm, and I'm not joking. It, it was really that bad until we, the season we won the league. Then all of a sudden I was in Clinton cards and I'm seeing Man City calendars in Milton Keynes. And I'm like, oh, okay. 
And then I go Barcelona and they've got half a shop in Barcelona. I'm thinking things have changed. My God. So just for the people uh, on the audio side of things, a lot of sort of old school brother city shirts, a lot of Rosler on the back. So was Rosler your, was he, yeah, he, was, he, was, your, he was your guy? You know, you know what? If I'm being honest, because, um, so we, we did a show the other day. I don't know. Do you know Ian Cheeseman? Have you heard yeah. of him? Yeah. So we did a show with Ian Cheeseman the other day and, um, we, he was really, we were really talking about the olden days and stuff. And with with me, like King Clad's era was when I started. I really just after, well, midway through the King Clad's era, we moved back down south, and that's when I fell out of love with football for probably about, I reckon, about five years. To be honest, um, before that, it was like my life. And I always say that up north, it was very different to down like would get to school early to play football before school lunch play football after school rush home to get changed hit the field play football then have to go home before it's dark and then play football in the back garden till it's pitch black dark and that would be repeat every day move back down south maybe it was my age slightly but it just wasn't the same um and and that time my my peter peter Beagree, gary flickcroft uh uve rossler paul walsh Niall quinn Terry Phelan, Edge Hill, and that that was when I, I was going to um, I was going to Main Road kind of every other weekend then then as well. And I also used to go and watch Crew play quite a lot as well. To be fair, King Cladsey obviously was unreal, but yeah, Rossler for me was just I don't know. No, he's the a, a best of a bad bunch probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it always it always annoyed me that he wore number twenty eight as well. I don't know why that used to grind my gears, but it's just it's quite such a good a... number for a striker. Twenty eight. Oh, he, was one, he was one of the early. You know, I think he might have had in that time the highest number. It was pretty. Yeah, twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, Fifty well, yeah, goals, so... one hundred and fifty two appearances for City. How many? Yeah. How many? Fifty goals in one hundred and fifty two appearances. See, that's 90... not bad. To be fair, is it? Come on. Yeah, between ninety four and ninety eight. So, what's that like? One in three, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to do this celebration when he scored, and he'd like slide on the floor in a knee, and like do this, like. <laughs> now doing that is a bit like fuck yeah. yeah. So it's like the like the fu symbol, sort of the the fist under the yeah. The other thing with Ross that was interesting is obviously he was German, but he was. Yeah. He was East German, and back then it was oh, okay. The East and West was, Germany. So. Yeah, and then when they combined, obviously not many, not many East Germans initially got into the squad. Really, it was just pretty much the whole of West Germany. And but yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I don't know if this is totally bull, bullshit made up in my own mind, but I'm sure it was a rumor when I was a kid. It's I, I think we're the same age. That's around about the same age because. I was I was young play, when when Rosler played for City, and I don't know if it was City fans. Was taking the piss out of United fans. Yeah, they were he's taking the piss. I know what you can say. His, his granddad didn't do that. <laughs> his, his, his granddad bombed Old Trafford or something like that, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. know what? And, and and based on that, here's a really interesting fact as well for, for people that um for people that don't know, Manchester City have got one of the highest attendances of all time. I okay. mean, no, Aaron. I don't I don't even know Aaron. if my granddad yeah. was born when it happened. However, however, the highest attendance of all time is at Manchester City's ground. But it was Manchester United <laughs> because of Rossler's granddad. Yeah, the, <laughs> the ground was out of action, wasn't it? So they shared the ground. Yeah. yeah. Shared the ground for a bit. Yeah. Which, sit, oh, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. Well, yeah, City fans have a name for us because we had to borrow their kit and stuff like that. But, you know, long story. Well, yeah. I, we had to cling on to things, didn't we? Hundred percent. But that, that that those pictures, obviously, you all, all them kits on the on the bed. Obviously, we yeah. In fact, have you got? Is that a Flickcroft you've got there? As yeah, well? Gary Flickcroft. I loved. That was, I, that, that's I, got Gary Flickcroft there. Um, uh, the one that the one that impressed me the most, to be honest, is the kind of um, I'm not good with cu- with uh colours. What what name it is? But burgundy is it? Which one? Uh, the one on the yeah, the, the one on the left. As we yeah, see it, that is. Because yeah. that's the oldest kit. That was my first kit. That like eighties. Oh, that little sort of... yeah. That was like yeah. Paul Lake era. Yeah. 
And um, so oh. you're big. You're obviously, it looks like you're big. You were a big kit fan, obviously. I think most kids when they had every kit, every well, it's once every two seasons you used to get a kit, yeah. probably, rather than every season like it is now. So, do you remember your first your first kit? My first kit, I'll be one hundred with you. My first kit would have been Watford because it was oh, before. Really? I, yeah, yeah, it would have been my, my dad. My, so my my real dad, um, he he was like season ticket holder at Vicarage Road, um, program collector. Um, yeah, so he probably hurt him a little bit that I supported City. Bless him. But would that have been John Barnes, or was that before? Was nah, that... John Barnes. I mean, I remember. I was having this conversation the other day. One of Man City's in our quite good, no, not not good era, but in our in in a era better than Rossler. So early days when I was supporting City, we had uh, Tony Tony Coton. I think it was Coton or Cotton in goal. Cotton, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. He played for Watford before, and I was going then. Um, there's a few other players around then that was, yeah. Watford had a few few. David James was from Watford as well, actually, and. John Barnes was before my era, but my dad certainly knew about John Barnes. Uh, Luther Blissett was another big Watford one. Yeah, yeah, Luther Blissett, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, so my first Watford, my first shirt would have been Watford. Then it was the Burgundy City one. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know I had that till I looked at that picture. I thought that was before. Oh, yeah. Before about Tony Colton. I remember it back in school, <laughs> City fans used to always compare Tony Colton to Smike or saying, Tony Colton's well better than Smyrna, blah, blah, blah. Then ended up at United and became like the third choice goalkeeper. You, yeah. <laughs> you know what? He was, he was a good keeper. He was a good keeper, but I mean... Decent. I, uh, you know, we can talk about United with fond memories because actually this era we're looking at right here was early days of the Premier League. Yeah. And I'm... <laughs> Maybe I should be. I always say that I didn't see United really as rivals then because by this point we were really starting to go downhill and United were amazing. So, yeah. I, for me, she was the best keeper ever in the Premier League. People will say Czech, uh, baffled by that, to be honest with you. But I know you're not fun, just good, but I didn't realize about the, uh, the cartwheels. The cartwheel. so. Yeah, well. James, the last said about that, the better. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Let's not get into the politics of Schmeichel. I'll be here, his all, colours. I'll be here all night. Yeah. No, you but, you see that wall there, the wall at the bottom? Yeah. That was when I just moved down south. And it was almost, I remember in my room, I had a, sh I literally called it a shrine to Manchester City. And I think it was kind of like pissed off that we'd moved away, to be frank with you. So it was like, make a shrine to this place that I'm probably not going to go back to for quite some time. So I don't think many people do that when you leave Manchester. It's probably up, up, up the other way around. I'd love to move back. I really would. Get on it. Come back. You could do with some fans at your gas. So you might... <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll go into a bit more depth in, uh, into the kits that City have obviously had. But in the 90s, I'll give it to you, City had some... Some really good kits, you know. Like I mean, obviously researching this episode for you and stuff, looking more into kits I don't really give a shit about. But they've had some really decent kits, some howlers, but some decent kits as well. But you know, we talk about how do you feel the progression's gone? Because it seems every every team sort of goes through having good kits to, to really bad ones, to no, good ones again. Have you ever cut yeah, the way that I, I see that kits work is it seems to be like when one club um moves on to a new sponsor they all do a cycle because obviously yeah. if united leave nike then nike's got a huge budget that they now can throw at another club so and i mean for me i i'll always love like i think umbro were really good as, as football kits go umbro were always good um i liked the kappa kit because we were the first team in england to do the kappa thing um, I'm fortunate for Capra. I think we got relegated that season. Um, but before that, it was mainly Italy and maybe one or two in Spain, but mainly Italy that did Capra. So I was quite proud of that. That was probably one of our proudest moments of that that period to get relegated in a Capra, tip, Capra kit. Um, didn't like Lecoq Sportive at all. Ooh, I was going to say that. They, they, they were rough. They were some rough kits. Then we had a little stint with Umbro again, didn't we? We did, like, yeah. 
I think, I think you're, you're, you're one of the teams. One of the teams that has sort of flirted with a lot of different uh, yeah. shirt manufacturers, definitely. Yeah, we're trying, yeah, to, I we're think trying to generate some I, income to hide. Top of me, money. Top of me I, can think, I can think of Umbro, Kappa, Lecoq Sportif, Reebok, Umbro. Reebok, again. yeah, Jesus, yeah. Nike, Nike, and then Puma. Yeah, I mean You've Puma's an interesting one. Interesting in that I, I, I don't rate Puma kits, you know. I think the only kit you know what, the, the kits they, they make get it right or get it horribly wrong. Yeah, I think the only good kits they make are for Marseille, personally. I think I think it makes some good good ones for the African nations, but yeah, otherwise yeah. it can be a bit ropey. They're like honestly, it's like there's some some of my favourite city kits have been with Puma, and actually some of their um, like I love this range, the, the whole tracksuit, the t-shirt. I love like this. That's yeah. nice. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk a bit more about the other kits later on, some of the other sort of features we've got coming up. What I thought I would do is give you a little test, a little quiz on some of the players that have played for Man City. Obviously, I've hidden their faces. I imagine you're going to get five out of five because you know your football. So, you know, I'd be, I'd be I know my body you're... shapes. <laughs> well, yeah. But I think you would know the players. Do you know what I mean? You can tell, can't you? Um, so with these five, I've hidden the faces of the players with our faces. Um, so we'll kick off this first one. I want to know who this is. It's not James. Yeah, Lecoq Sportif. That's one of the worst Lecoq Sportif ones you've had as well. On the shoulder as yeah, well. Like, right right on the shoulder of that Lecoq Sportif as well, isn't it? Not great. Not great. I can give you a bit of a clue if you need any clue. Right. I've got a name in my head, but give me a clue. I'm going off the yeah. number here. I think I know who it is. Yeah, that's why. That, that's why I did it. Give a bit of a clue on numbers and stuff. The but, image, um, the image there doesn't help because the, my face on that gives it strong Stephen Island vibes, and I don't think that's <laughs> Stephen Island. Yeah. Uh, pink well, uh, in the background. Well, I, I could see looking at the hand. It looks like there's a big ring. Right, okay. that is Stephen Island vibes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, is that your guess? Or, or your... I no, no, no. I, I, I like it. I, 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 was it clue? Look at the number. Um, yeah, you can look at the number, definitely. What was the clue? <laughs> what was the clue? Um, scored a great free kick against... Ilano. Who? Ilano. You're right, it is Ilano. I draw, I I've got so. one picture. So I, thought, was, I thought that was Ilano. Against, you know what yeah. throws me a little bit? His hands yeah. look a bit darker than his skin tone often did, but that might be my screen, and that might be why I think I currently look orange. But that's anyway. that's just sunny Manchester for you, as you'd know, Daps. <laughs> it's just the great weather we have here. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, I really should have put the player in. I don't know why I've not done that. Never mind. Um, right, so the next one is this. It's not me. You must know who this is. Who is this really one? Who that is. <laughs> Easy. Come on. Zabaletta? Come on. Look at the number. I can also give you a clue on this one as well. I don't know who number four was. Scored a goal that won you the league. Where do you want your statue? Go on, that's a famous quote. Gary Neville. Where do you want your statue? Vincent Company. There you go. It is my Vincent favorite Company, city yeah. player of all time. I did not know who's number four. You know, that was shock. That's shocking. Cool. That's a yeah. shocker. You got it right, so it doesn't really matter, does it? You got it right. Okay, so two for two so far. The next one, he'll be gutted. He's not here for this, Sean. Oh, oh, that's a great picture because the city have had a few keepers over the years. Yeah, yeah. I want to say Joe Hart. Final answer? Yeah. Shay Given. Oh. Oh. What a keeper. Great keeper. Proper. Great I was like, always remember like just before we there, signed him, there. just before we signed him, Newcastle played Liverpool and I think they lost something like 7 1 or something. And Shay Given won man of the match, even though he conceded seven goals because that's how damn good. He, and at the end of it, you could tell because he was being rumoured to be going to City. And at the end of the game, you could tell he's going City because he literally was like, 
I've worked my ass off. I've got man of the match, but you lot are all so shit. We still lost 7-1. Yeah. He was really yeah. good, man, especially for a short guy. Yeah, 5 foot 11, could, I think he was. Yeah. He could have played for any team in, in the league. United, yeah. it's, um, Liverpool, anyone. He could have gone to any team. He was, he was that good. Great. Yeah, great he really was. Player. Amazing great. shot stopper. Just amazing yeah. shot stopper. Is what is what you want from a keeper as well. I hate, do you know, what? I don't like that phrase for a goalkeeper. He's an amazing shot. Stopper. Every goalkeeper should be an amazing shot yeah. stopper. It should be. You know what? Minimum we, requirement. We did our best eleven the other day, and I went into it saying Edison is our best goalkeeper, right? In my, and this is not talking about keepers that I don't like, Bert Troutman or someone like that. That is is yeah. talking, and then we started talking about moments, and it's like. If if you wanted me to tell you Edison's best moments, every single one will be something to do with him coming out and maybe a pass over the top or getting involved in a triangle. And, and then Joe Hart got mentioned, and it's like best moments. You talk about Champions League games against Barcelona where in it, uh, Messi's lying on the floor thinking, how am I going to beat this goalkeeper? And it's like, yeah, actually, Hart kept us in a lot more games than Edison ever has. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Mm. So, um, two for three so far. So, we'll move on to the next one for you. I get, I'm who's this again? It's not, it's not, um, I ooh. think that's Zeko. Very God, pale, Zeko. yeah, <laughs> very Bosnian, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> color of his arms. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that stance, he loved that stance as well, yeah. Definitely. And the best one. Say the best to the last, as you should always. Uh, who is this one? <laughs> Sean Mark Phillips. No, Sean Gota. Sean Gota. <laughs> Sean Gota. Sean Gota. <laughs> really got, you got your Sean's mixed up. Yeah, that is obviously the GOAT. Sean. That's probably that your was... best look. Or Eve kit as well, by the way. I'd yeah, say. it is. It is. Um, it's funny because what they did, I think this was after Kappa. Yeah, and the way you can tell is because it was Kappa when Kappa came in, our badge changed. Yeah, oh, okay, and the yeah, color yeah. of our kit went from kind of like sky blue to electric blue. Yeah, and then Lecoq yeah. Sportif carried it into with that badge and into electric blue, and then took it back to sky blue. And then when it then we got rid of that awful shit show of a badge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. Why do like, clubs change not, not, badges? Not too many. Well, some clubs do it, but City really changed the badge, didn't they? They, they went all out for it uh, with, with the change of the badge. I think that was probably when Fra when Francis Lee, when the club got bought off of Francis Lee and Co. And probably whoever came in then and gave us a bit more stability, kind of, but done some stupid commercial shit. Who is EDOS? I was trying to work this out. Were they to do with computers? Yeah, I think they were computers. Yeah. Computer games. The only ones that did, um, what's she called? Lara Croft and stuff like that. I'm sure they are. Okay, PlayStation days. Yeah, yeah. It would yeah, be. yeah. It's, it was no, a... it's, it's getting less baggy, but it's still a little bit baggy. A little bit baggy, yeah. United fans had um, an acronym for IDOS. And I, you know what? I, can't, I can remember it all of it. I know it. I know it. Uh, Go on. 11 idiots dreaming of success. Well, well, that, well, those dreams came true, baby. Yeah, if I say United should be getting sponsored by them next season, then that's the sort of material that looks like it'd pull really easily. You know, and you get those really annoying pulls across oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Like, it, does. like it. This shirt now. It's like this shirt now. It's the exact same. I think um, you know what? A special mention to the might of football. Yeah, sensational Great. balls. The Ultimax, the Mitre Ultimax is the best football yeah. one to man yeah. ever. Hundred percent. So not too bad. You did four out of five. So, you know, yeah. You I like feel like the given one, one, you, you yeah. size to make yeah. given look fatter than he was. <laughs> he looked fat. No, I think no, there was no editing, no changing. It was obviously in his last couple of games, he thought, I'm just going to let myself go. Don't worry about it. Why not? Um, he did all right. He did all right. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to get into some Kit Simons here on Talking Kit. <laughs> Kit Simons played for us, I think, didn't he? He did. He did. He did. So we've not made this feature up just for you. It's not all about. So <laughs> right. you, you know, you, you you always think about City. It's 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 fine. 
and I'll prefer when it's Fulham days and obviously Wales. That's that's the only reason we do he's on he's on this. So if you don't know what Kits Diamonds is, basically it's a feature that we show you some kits, you rate them out of five, and it's basically called Kit Simons because his name's Kit. That's yeah, so rather than stars, you'd rate it out of Kit Simons, basically. People do do decimals as well, Daps, just so you know. People have started to do decimals if you want a one point five or two point five in there. So by all okay. means you can do that as well if you want to. Yeah, definitely. So there's always a theme. And I decided to go for a theme. Obviously, Man City um, episode today. So the theme is going to be... Champions. Mm, fortunately for you, no. It's um, City when you were sponsored by Brother. Oh. So, yeah, so it's five kits. You know what? This is by crazy. Brother. I had that kit. I know that kit. I had King Cladzi on the back of the kit. However... I never knew it had that in the background. Do you know what? Until we, until researching it and finding that picture, neither did I. And yeah, it's I didn't quite know if it was like a wa watermark on the picture, but if it's actually in the kit, I didn't realise that either. Yeah, it's is, in the kit, but that's obviously... Is that on the kit? Yeah, so this was the Man City home 95 to 97 shirt. <clears throat> and if you think back to that time, that was the same time Manchester United had their shirt that had Old Trafford in the, the, yeah, the, yeah. On the shirt. Yeah, Umbro did that a lot. So it kind of makes it kind of makes sense that Umbro have done something similar for yeah. the sister. Um, so yeah, so it's like I say the ninety-five to ninety-seven shirt it got two seasons out of it, which uh, parents are grateful for. Probably only cost around thirty pound then, which you know, yeah, yeah, I think it's ridiculous. You think about it now. So yeah, go on and daps. You said you had this shirt, King Cladzi on the back. What's your sort of thinking on this shirt? How much do you like it, and how much are you going to give it out of five? I remember at the time I liked it quite a lot. It's funny because as a kid, I guess I never looked at the um, detail as much. It was just, I need every home, every away kit. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if I like it or not. And I also need, for when we go on holiday, I need the training tracksuit to act like I'm a football player going on holiday. So, um, on the plane. City didn't yeah, have good European days back then, though. But <laughs> No, I did. I did, though. I did. I did. <laughs> well, no. No, they did, James, in the lower leagues when he went to Swansea and Cardiff. They did that. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is that I'd go Portugal. We, we used to go Portugal a lot. We nearly moved there due to my dad's health. And Portugal's renowned for golf. We'd meet a lot of... I mean, not many City players were playing in international tournaments in the summer. So we'd meet quite a few City players over there every summer and stuff. So um, Now, out of five, I don't know. This is hard with it being the first one because... You don't want to get too carried away and you bring in yeah, yeah, better yeah. shirts. So I'm going to go with this a solid 3.2. Okay. 3.2. Decent score midway. James, you're thinking on it? Um, Umbro badge is where it should be. I, I, I don't, I, I'm the same as you guys. I don't remember that sort of being yeah. in the background of the shirt, the Man Manchester City bit at all. Liking the collar, I like the V shape on the collar as well. I will mark it down. Though. I don't like the crest or the shield around, do I. around the badge. That's the, bad, like that's that. the one bad bit from this, I think. It doesn't need to be there. I'm going to go for three Kit Simons on this one. Three Kit Simons. Okay, I'll finish it off. Um, typical City Blue. The City Blue, I remember. I'm gonna, I was almost going to say like then. And that's the wrong word to use. Isn't it's it, fine. Bill? You said it. You said no, it. No, no. I was going to say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> but it's the the what the city blue I remember. Sort of. You know. You said you went yeah. to that Alex the blue with Capra and a Cox sporty. But this is the city I remember whacking every single game in the Premier League every time I played in. Which I love. Yeah, not true. Um, <laughs> um, I'm I'm different to you. This is obviously the interesting thing about people are, are they perceived kits. I love the sort of shield around the badge it's proper night mm -hmm. is united used to have it a lot and it just reminds me of you know playing in the school schoolyard against city fans um you know you're wearing the united shirt they're wearing their city shirt and yeah i, I it's, it's one of the better home shirts i think i remember you having really so i'm, I'm gonna give it a solid i want to stay in the freeze but i want to give it a 3.8 i think oh, you know like one it. thing that's worth i don't know what other ones you're going to put up but the one thing I would say on this shirt and on a, back then clubs used to stay with their sponsors for a long time. Obviously you lot with sharp us with brother um, Arsenal with JVC, I think was one. I remember Liverpool. Yeah. I can't think of Liverpool. Carlsberg. They were now. Yeah. Carlsberg. But I think before Carlsberg, they were, or maybe they were with Carlsberg for a hell of a long time. Yeah, candy, candy, well, candy. Um, yeah. 
He's even now when when new kits come out, sometimes you see people online will take the current sponsor off and put, put the old one brother on. on. Brother's the one. Brother is the go-to for City, and it makes the shirt look better. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I don't yeah. know how it does it, but when you put these old school sponsors on, the shirts just look better. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I fully agree with you. Um, the next kit we're going to look at is this one. So this mm. is the Manchester City 97 to 98 away shirt. Kappa. Yeah, as you can see, it's Kappa on there. Got I'll the rubber. That's Jesus. I probably, maybe. You you had a lot back then. It's got the 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 badge, like you said, that got changed. The the rip off of the United badge um, with the eagle on there. Yeah. Uh, the brother is in a line of sort of burgundy, a blue top half, white sort of bottom half. Kappa, that typical 90s Kappa down the sleeves. Um, yeah, that's what you're thinking of this one, pal. So this is definitely in the era where I fell out of love with football. <laughs> in fact, to the point where when I moved, the summer I moved down south was... Um, I think it might was it it might have been the year of um Euro nine when was the Gaza Scotland goal? Was that ninety six? Yeah, I think it was ninety six. So it was maybe just before this. And some of my a few of my best mates up there were uh, red were Bolton fans. And I was slyly becoming a bit of a lover of Bolton. For a p- I went Honest to, to God, how, how many more teams? How many more teams? No, I, I, I supported City. It's just they were frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. I was a <laughs> adolescent, and um, so at this period, I've, I'm so unattached to. Um, it was definitely because I moved down south. That is the reason. Um, I, I actually looking back at the kit, I quite like the kit. Um, it's just. You know, as you get older, you understand what they're doing with kits that little bit more. Because here I'm thinking the top bit, what's that got to do with City? But then you see that little stripe across the middle. And that is the same as, remember when I said that kit on the left, You're that was the first kit I ever had, yeah. is that? Yeah. Um, Definitely. That burgundy, yeah, that City have, have been renowned for having sort of yeah. blue shirts. Yeah. But the, the dark blue is a bit weird. But um, yeah. I, I like... See, this is where it's hard because I actually quite <laughs> like it, but do I score it better than a classic city kit that I just scored 3.2? Um, no, so I'm going to give it a 2.8. Oh, okay. Uh, James? Um, this is not a classic city kit, if you think of a city kit, at least in my eyes. I, I've, I like the collar. I also like the sleeves. I imagine that's like a tight fit on the sleeves, which I quite yeah. like. Um not even mad about the brother bit. It's just the it's just the three colours that broke down. Just not a fan of it. Don't like the old badge as well. Uh, that well, I say old badge. The new badge that they've since reversed. Um, I'm gonna go for two out of five on this one. S- sorry, yeah. can I confirm? Was this ninety seven ninety eight or ninety eight ninety nine? Ninety seven ninety eight. Right, we got. It may, be, it may have been. It may have been. It may have been your third shirt um, in ninety nine, but it's because you had that aluminous. Green and yellow, didn't you? Is your home shirt that year? I believe 98, 99. Um, Maybe we were on the way up actually by this point. That's oh, the home shirt. Was that the home yeah. shirt? Yeah, we oh, got sorry, relegated. We got relegated. Really yeah. uh, a luminous green, sorry. Yeah. Um, so we, me, we got relegated. Yeah. From the first division. This, this season. Yeah. Yeah, because they didn't have the championship then, did they? It was Premier League, oh, first division. One, division two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we got we got relegated. We finished 22nd. Out of, out of 24 teams. So. Yeah, and we actually like were six points off of 21st as well. Yeah. So that was God. the lowest of the low. I think in that shirt was probably the last time you saw Georgie King Cladsey probably as well. I imagine so. The minute yeah, we dropped it's... out of the Premier League, he just got kicked about for fun. No referees protecting him. He just got <laughs> bullied. I don't, I don't think referees offered much protection back then anyway, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but let alone, we they didn't in the Premier League, but when you dropped into the lower leagues, if you were like 
it's almost like you had a target on your head where the referees, when the ball went to you, if you were from a Premier League team, let alone if you were King Cladsey, the ref would turn the other way and go, do what you want to do, boys. Just <laughs> Get these <laughs> foreigners out of football, out of English football. Conspiracy right now. now. Conspiracy now with this. But, yeah. no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. They did, did they get kicked properly. Yeah, then. they did. They did. Oh, 100%. But yeah, I'm going to score this one. I, the only good thing is it's Kappa. you got to, you got to love a Kappa kit. And the badge... I'm not just saying it because it's Manchester City, but it's po- possibly one of the worst badges Fucking in football. Horrible. You know when a badge is... We, me and Soups talk about badges a lot when we're doing artwork, right? And how when badges first got made, there was no um, protocol to follow. So when yeah. we're trying to put badges on artwork, it's like some of them, like Villa's one's really long and thin. Then you've got one that's round and it's like how you make them look the same size. And then yeah. when... But that's fine because they got made back in 19... 19- 20 or something this got made in the 90s why is the detail so shit why is it so fucking distorted and shit it's horrible and do you know what i don't even know what the three stars stand i was gonna for. say are they for relegations the stars or... <laughs> do you know what it might be three leads i reckon uh probably maybe that's disgusting if you have done that man but yeah <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> so I think one's for the St. John's trophy, isn't it? Uh LDV Vans trophy. <laughs> one's for the Remind me what trophies you've won in the last um <laughs> we're, not, we're not here for that. We're not here for that. <laughs> no, it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see what the stars are for though. Yeah. I'm gonna find um, out while we continue. Well, yeah, so it's the worst kit. Well, I know what the five are, but it's the worst kit of the five. Um I'm gonna give it a one. I don't like it at all. Like you say, the dark yeah. blue. Why is it there? Why, if if, yeah. if that blue, if that blue was burgundy as well, it probably works ten times better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it would be more city like because I, like I said, I've never witnessed until looking at it now. I've never realised the bit across the middle. I like that bit because that is yeah. old school city. The yeah. top bit probably just to contrast and maybe make it. I reckon this was our third kit. I think it was actually your way in nineteen ninety eight. Is it away? Yeah, it was your nice seven ninety eight. So, yeah, not a great one. So I'm gonna get a one on that one. I think. Okay, the next shirt is this one, and it is again another classic one for me. This is the Man City home shirt, ninety three to ninety five. Um, when I look at this, I, I instantly think of a picture with Liam Gallagher wearing it. You know, when they were forced to pretend to be City fans. Um, Liar. <laughs> <laughs> they're both Celtic fans they're both Celtic fans so what does that tell you <laughs> they both used to go in the Gold Cup in Longside I know this for a fact they both used to go into the Gold Cup pub in Longside they that the Gold Cup still going I, I know it is I know it is and they both used to wear Celtic shirts and no used to go in there saying that City was shit and used to hate them and all of a sudden get a bit of notoriety oh no you got to pretend like you're proper mank don't support United Stone Roses and all that Happy Mondays blah 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 so they pretended to support City then that's a, that's how that one works. But that that kit reminds me. Of Listen, I I remember, I remember back in the days when we used to have bitter bitter stories about Man United like that when they were really successful, and we'd like <laughs> make up fact. really bitter stories about them. Yeah, it's facts. It's absolute facts. So yeah, it's got a nice blue uh, collar, dark blue collar, um, with a white stripe and a light blue stripe. It's got Umbro sort of logos and a blue stripe round the sleeves. Uh, classic brother. And um, Umbro, the classic 90s Umbro badge, and a city badge in sort of a shield again. Uh, Daps, I'm gonna say it's one of the better brother home shirts that you had, very nice and clean. What are you thinking? That, um, so I had Flickcroft on one of the shirts in the picture was this one, yeah, um, yeah. I like this one, and it's interesting because you know, when we were talking about the shield around the badge. Yeah. It works better with white in the background. I agree. With you. I was going to say the same for this one. I agree. This one looks yeah. better. Um, yeah. I like the colour on this. The colour on this one is kind of proper reminds me of England 1996 colour. You know, one of them smaller curly colours. Oh, yeah. These were my favourite yeah. type of colours. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this is before we started performing quite badly. This is like kind of my era. I would give this a... Three point nine. Three point nine. You're quite a t- you're quite a harsh scorer, aren't you? 
on, on the old kits. Quite I'm, I'm, you know what it is? I'm not a. I I prefer new school kits to old school kits. Oh, yeah, he's right. waiting for he's waiting for this season's third to come up. <laughs> His brother, so he won't. Unfortunately, um, James, can I get your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I agree with Daps on that one. Even though this has got a shield round, it looks just, it looks much better with the white shield, and it's it, I don't know, it just looks cleaner. Um, yeah. Back to the old school badge, which is a plus. Feeling the uh, umbra on the sleeves. The brother is quite bold, but it's not overstated. And like Daps was saying earlier, you just you picture that and you think of uh, Man City as well. Liking the collar for me, this is a four. I think this is the best one you've shown so far. So yeah, this is the best one out of the ones you've shown so far. Yeah, I fully agree with that. Um, one thing I know, one thing I really liked about Brother as a sponsor was the fact it was in lowercase. I think it just really worked uh, aesthetically pleasing and that sort of thing. The best, the best city badge for me proper reminds me of sort of like again just growing up with city fans as little as they were um, around that time, obviously. Um, yeah, it's probably it's yeah, still it's, it's, we still haven't got any more. Apparently. Well, that's true. True. Apparently, there's more. There's, there's more in Manchester, but. That's not true. Though. I, 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 that, 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 that story right there is not true as well. There, there, of course, there's more Manchester City fans in Manchester than there are other parts of the country. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Yeah, Manchester is more blue than red. No, definitely not. Well, yeah, like I say, it, it does take me back to the sort of mid 90s. Um, favorite, probably my favorite. If I can have a favorite city shirt, that makes no sense. But you keep saying it's a bit one. To, you know what I mean? I'm. When I, when I put my talking kit hat on, all rivalries go out the side. But when, once the camera stop rolling, <laughs> I've noticed. I've noticed. Um, but you know what? It's it's nice because with you, it's the first time I actually feel a real rivalry. Like the, the different things. Like, the kids. Like, like most most United fans that aren't from Manchester, they have zero rivalry with Manchester City, right? Yeah. yeah. But the fact is, if you if you're from Manchester and you support Liverpool, Man United, or Man City, there's rivalry at work. Every day when you're going to work, you face rivalry. Where it's one of those three teams, and it's going to be. So so I I feel it with you. I can feel that you're ready. Whereas other United fans down here aren't ready for when City fans say stuff because it's like, oh fucking hell, I've never had to deal with this before. A City fan, what's going on? Whereas with you, it's like dealt with them every day. So I know yeah, what to say back to you. <laughs> you haven't, I, I haven't been, with, I haven't been with family, so I'm, you know, I know what to say back. Obviously, I've dealt with yeah. it. So, but yeah, so, I, I would say this is the probably the best. So I'm going to give it a four point. Oh, I was gonna go five, but I'm not, I can't. I can't rate it that high. I mean, come on, still City at the end of the day. So I'm gonna go four point four on this one. So okay. before you move on to the next one, can we go back okay. to one? This is really, really bad. But I'm look. I'm a very real okay. person, so I'm gonna read out right what I've just found okay. out oh, about the go stars. The previous, the this stars. Go back to the previous one. This is absolutely embarrassing, right? <laughs> so <Go on>. the <laughs> current City badge used since 1997. People, it's not the current one anymore. This article must be quite old. Um, displays three stars above the main crest. Usually, stars are placed on a club's badge or jersey to display the number of European Cup victories they have. However, the stars on the badge that will be replaced at the end of the season, so they're saying, yeah, we're getting rid of this, uh, are purely decorative. <laughs> When introduced, the stars were included to make the badge feel continental and give it a modern look. It has never been the most popular emblem, though, and the club have cons uh, consulted the fans to, re to remove it. So basically, Kappa came in from Italy and thought, we need to make this club look continental. We're going to give them some makeup fucking trophies. That's a shambles, I it? Decorative, eh? How might, as well put, might as well put a Christmas sorry, tree on it. That, that it sounds like we had the same PR team that started advertising um, free tickets on websites. Do you know what it sounds like? That Ed Woodward was part of your back room, uh, your boardroom. That's what he would do. That's Making up Woodward trophies. That's ridiculous. Audi Cups and that. No, we're not Tottenham. Yeah, it's all right. Well, no. Well, thanks for finding out that that I want to bother. I wish I hadn't. To be honest, I, I, I would have. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next one, we've got is this one again. 
Oh, it's a classic on this for me, definitely. This is the um, 92 to 94 away shirt. It's uh, deep purple with white pinstripes. Again, it's got a city. Um, the, cre uh, the crest is in a badge or a shield. Uh, it's a lighter purple. And the brother's in sort of a yellow. And so is the Umbro. Nice collar with a button um, and stuff. Um, Daps. Go on. Yeah. What we think. Did, did I see this on your bed, Daps? Did you have this one? I think it is. Yeah. I did, I did, which is strange because I, I kept thinking I didn't have this one because I didn't particularly like it, but I did clearly have it. <laughs> there's, there's, um, this this shirt just screams Steve Lomas at me. <laughs> I don't know why, it just screams Steve Lomas at me. For those that don't know, I think Steve Lomas might have been Northern Ireland. Um, yes, he was. was. Yeah, Irish, so yeah. that, was, that was our kind of, yeah, we've got a player for, you, they've got Keane and Irwin. <laughs> we've, got, we've got an Ireland player too. Northern Ireland, Joe, not Republic. Joe, I remember but, about Steve Lomas, when he swallowed his tongue at West Ham, <laughs> and someone else got it out of a spoon. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and then, I don't know if it was like a 90s thing. Got out of a spoon? Well, Where was the spoon from? <laughs> <laughs> someone was eating a Muller's Corner on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but when I heard that, for, it must have been for ages, I feared swallowing my tongue. It just seemed yeah, to be same. a thing. Yeah, like, like, but ne you know, you never even think about it. Like, swallowing your tongue, how do you do that? But I just... When he says Steve Olmos, that's what I think of when he did it at West Ham. Um, it's, it's like one of those it's, it's, things, and you're going to have this soon, Aaron, where, like, when you have a child, all of a sudden you fear things, right? <laughs> like, my daughter's now five. My wife still, like, when we, we still have to chop up grapes for her. She knows how to damn well eat, right? But, <laughs> but I chop them up just to kind of middle ground so my missus isn't too irritated. I half them. Not good enough. Quarters, because she's read a story about how... But it's like, she, no, no, no. She's five now. It's not like we're going to roll on her and... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's one of those ones where when you hear something, the same with me, I got told when I was really young by my mum that I couldn't have peanuts because I could choke on them. I don't eat peanuts to this day. <laughs> oh, wow. Unless your wife cuts them up into quarters or something. <laughs> <laughs> just, just makes it into a paste and spreads it on some sandwiches. And I hate, hate it as well. Especially, I hate when my daughter spills it on my sofa today. Really hate it. Anyway, so this shirt, um, I didn't like the collar. Didn't okay. like the collar. Um, yeah. The colour is not a city colour. I always remember you having like a deep, per deep purple kit. For so Maybe it's just because of this one. I don't know. But We've had one or two, but it's like... Yeah. It's not city. No. It's not city. If, no. if, I talk, if I think city, a ways... They're either um, so home is sky blue, not electric blue. Away is either burgundy or a strange one is the stripe. Yeah, the sash. Yeah, because olden days we we did have the stripe. Um, yeah, and we went back to it briefly at one point. But purple, I don't really. But I did have it clearly. I didn't realize I did. But um, for me, this is the worst of the bunch. Uh, Two point five. It's okay. still got a beautiful badge and a lovely sponsor, and it's 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 uh represents a beautiful part of Manchester. Come my side, mate. <laughs> to try that again in the Manc accent this time. <laughs> uh, I think that was supposed to be Steve Lomas. That <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Raheem Sterling. <laughs> uh, James, what what's your take on this one? Yeah, I didn't. Even, I wasn't even aware this was a city kit. I'll be honest with you. Um, not feeling it. Don't like the pinstripes. It looks a bit like a pajama top, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. It's a bit like you're ready for bed. Um, I worry as well that on the back it would have a square for your number, and I hate that on kits. I'm, I I'm speculating. I don't know if it did. You know, I, I don't think I, I didn't have a name on the back of this one as well. By the way. I'd remember um, it if I had a name on the back. Definitely didn't have a name on the back of this one. Yeah, maybe I, I, it's squad numbers back then. Still, I, I don't mind the the gold or the or the yellow and the purple. It's a, it's a good color combination. But yeah, for me, this one one point five. It's not it's not the best. Best thing's the label, and I mean the actual Umbro label. Umbro <laughs> label. That's proper proper nineties. That that's yeah. Like that on every single kit. Um, no, it didn't have. Pinstripe, uh, didn't have a square on the back, James. It okay, just had uh, okay. it was yellow, similar to the yellow on the front. It was yellow writing, doesn't look great to be honest with you. Um, so maybe it's better and it don't show you for me personally. Do you know what? 
You're gonna say you like it, aren't you? No, no, no. Do you know what? Okay. It reminds me of so it reminds me of someone in school that had this shirt that's, that had BO. So when I look at it, I just look at BO straight away. Honestly, like I look at it and think that smells that kit. Because either he loved it and never washed it, so wore it all the time. But even like I don't know if you can see it. It just had BO. So I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like obviously you can tell it's an old, old shirt because the brothers sort of faded. Jaded a little you know? bit in it, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's what his shirt reminds me of, because it must have just been washed and washed. Maybe he didn't wash, and that's why it smelled a bit old. But I look at it and just think, yeah, that stinks, that shirt. And not just because Ricky it's Holden just as well. That's another one. Ricky Holden, I think, used to wear this as well. I wasn't a fan of it, though. I don't like the button, either. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the button. But I like it more than that 97. The cap so, one. Yeah. So I'll probably, I'm going to give it a 1.1. <laughs> I'll just say... It's better than that, but still not great. Um, okay, so your last one. Uh, I think you might like this one the best, but after saying what you've said, you're probably not going to. So this is the 97 to 99 home shirt, which doesn't look as dark as the Yeah, so it's the Kappa shirt, the shirt that you want. Uh, did you wear this in the, the playoff, or was it the actual green shirt that you wore? I think it was, was it? We wore the green one in the playoff. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. strange because I'm sure we got relegated in Kappa and we came done, back yeah. up in Kappa. But then I think yeah. the season we came back up, we changed, which would make sense to be fair. Um, but we definitely wore the we wore the uh, the fluorescent one, Andy Morrison, honorary shout out as well. Yeah. Um, like I said, with this one, I don't like the colour. I don't like the badge. But I do like that it was Kappa. Yeah. Um, I do like the sleeves because I like the tight, tight sleeve thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, still brother. We were with brother for a long time. And I do kind of like the fact that they included the burgundy in the home. Yeah, yeah. On the sort of the V shape of the, of the neck. And yeah. and I think maybe it's a vague bit of burgundy down the on, down by the colour as well. Yeah, there's a little pinch a pinch strap of white and burgundy on the sleeve yeah. as well. Uh, and I think I had like a white Kappa tracksuit as well that I not not poppers, not poppers. It wasn't the poppers one. It's a um it's hard because I was a big fan of the Kappa thing because it was like we are the first team in England wearing Kappa and Kappa's from Italy and but the blue wasn't us, the badge wasn't us. So it's like what's my highest score? Do you note them? <laughs> Have you given a did you give a 3.9? Yeah, so this is a 3.5. Okay. 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 Uh, James? Yeah, I don't, not a big fan of this. I, I agree with what Daps is saying, this, but the burgundy, like the little nod to that there on, on the on the neck line. Yeah. Uh, do yeah. like the sleeves. Also says like, NCSB in it as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, when you mentioned about playing football, I remember some of my friends playing in this kit, uh, playing football. The brother is the brother sort of. It's that material, isn't it? That doesn't wash well. It is. I think it's actually it's in the shirt. The no, I think yeah, the that's actually... what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. Okay. It doesn't. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I'll give this uh, two point nine. I'm not a big fan of this one. Two point nine. Okay. Um, yeah, it reminds me of when back in '99 when City fans were giving it the big in for getting promoted to Division One. And we just won the treble like it meant something, like it was something to to go along like us with. <laughs> so that's what it that's what it takes me back to that. So I'm not having a go. I'm just saying what it reminds me of, mate. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, you think of Paul Dickoff, don't you, straight away when you see this shirt. No. Um, uh Dickoff, you, you played for you, didn't you, in, in the final? Yeah, he did. I, I'm still I'm I'm intrigued that this is. What era? Because like I said, Kappa, I think probably were, when we got relegated, I think we were in Kappa. And when we yeah. came back up, we didn't come back up in Kappa, but we won promotion back to the Premier League, I think, in Kappa. No, to the first division in Kappa. Yeah, the Gillingham game yeah. was definitely Kappa, wasn't it? Yeah. I, remember I think Weaver. that might have been the last season. So maybe we had three years with them. Yeah. And I don't so, know, or it could have been four. And so this, I don't was know 90, this, this shirt was 97 to 99, so it was over two seasons. So that away shirt I've shown you, was the same season as this. The Kappa away shirt was the same season as this. And then 
So this mm-hmm. this would have been worn the season you went down from Division One and the season you come back up to Division One. And right. you'd have had the electric with the stripes in between. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. as yeah, as the as you say, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. So, but yeah, it reminds me of, sort of yeah, very you know our treble season kind of thing. And um, do you know what? I actually made a bet in school. And I don't know why. That if City came up that season, I would have dyed my hair blue. I didn't dye my hair blue. I was not. I was absolutely not going to do that at all. I'm trying to think the season you did the treble. Yeah. We won three. So that was not, what was that, 90? 90... 99. It wasn't the domestic treble either. It wasn't the. Sorry, I know it wasn't the no, domestic no, no, no. treble, young man. You don't have to tell me that. So was that was that the season when you won the Champions League in the dying minutes? Yeah, yeah. dying minutes. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, 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 I remember I watched that with probably about. I was back down here by then. I watched that with probably about fifteen of my mates, and not like we weren't. Only a few of them were, were United. Most of them were. A couple of Liverpool, only one City, obviously. Um, a couple of Arsenal, a couple of Tottenham. We all celebrated. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, it's a bit strange, but it was like, until recently, I really, in Europe, used to root for England to English teams. But we, we never used to play in England, in Europe, so. Yeah, it's a strange one, that, because it's something I just can't do, like. No, and that's because you've been in there for a long time, and your rivalry yeah. is Liverpool, who have got more than you. Well, no. well, it's not even that. I mean, if, even if we had, if we had ten, I just couldn't root for another team from these shores. I just can't do it. It's not in, ingrained in me. I, don't I think, think it's it's just different. Like I said, that it's so. I, I, who is up? Like United were our local rivals, right? And I think maybe. I even think slightly different at the age I was and the fact that I lived in less, I lived in Sandbach. I didn't live in Manchester. So I think when you get a bit older and you live in Manchester, the city rival, city United rivalry was bigger. Yeah, of course. If you're a younger kid living in Cheshire, it's not as big. And I was a fan of football back then, to be honest with you as well. So. That's, that's, that's all good. It's all good. But, I think we had some good kits there. I think that was all right. It's um, Kit Simons on talking kit. What we're going to do now, we're going to get into shirt impressions. Okay, welcome back to talking kit. That seems to have disappeared for some reason. Um, But the beautiful thing is, it's still the never foul emblem. The other that's day, um, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Well, the other day, um, somehow the emblem is linked to StreamYard, and one of the guys—I'm not going to say who it was—we we have our opinions of who we think it is that was using. Multiple people use our StreamYard, obviously, yeah. and they changed the picture when you do this yeah. to a picture of a basketball player, right? And the other day, I was I was on um, uh, the City podcast, and we were we were doing our greatest great eleven, greatest eleven of all time, and um, we started talking about company. I said, "Sorry, I'm going to pull rank here. If company is not in this greatest eleven, I won't ever podcast again. He's my greatest player of all time." And then I, for so, I, I started talking about when when I found out he was leaving, and it brought back memories of my dad because. I always remember, I'm, I'm definitely not going to, I can feel I'm fine today so I can talk about it. Um, and it brought back like that my, I got to see us win one league with my dad. And every time company spoke afterwards, me and my dad would both break down in tears. So I was speaking about that and I all of a sudden was like, oh God, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. And I had to go like, just stop the, not stop the stream obviously, but put the, and a picture of a basketball player came up and I thought... Oh God, I look like one of these guys. It's like I, you know, does podcasts and do every single sport and just claims a different <laughs> NFL and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're gonna get into some shirt impressions. So this is the game I like to play. I've sent Daps three Man City shirts, and he's told me of the player that first sprung to mind for each shirt. 
and it's on for James to try and guess the player that Daps has told me. So, might be a bit hard for James, obviously, not being a big City fan or a City fan at all. Go on, one of them, I'm not going to lie, yeah. one of them is going to be so hard for him because it was yeah. so hard for me. I, I had to really sit there and think for a while. If, if it's the one see, thinking, I might get my ears mixed up, but we'll see. Yeah, if it's the one I'm think you're, I'm thinking you're thinking. It, I, another player for me sprung out straight away, and you went for one that I didn't think at all. But if it's the one I'm thinking, but never mind. Um, so they're in, they're in sort of like chronological order. So the first one is this one. So this is the 2000 to 2002 away shirt. Uh, so it's Lecoq Sportif, Eidos, um, that horrible badge in the middle. And it's like a dirty grey silver. Um, it's got like a dark blue and fluorescent orange stripe halfway down in the centre of the shirt. And then one sleeve's got blue on the end of the sleeve and the other one's got the sort of green on the end of the sleeve. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not. not it's not. Good. It's not a great kit at all. No, at I, all. I, I honestly think this is the one I was talking about, right? Yeah, I knew it was, yeah. And and this shirt here is the shittest shirt. I mean, the third our third kit at the moment could probably give it a run for its money, but this is absolutely awful. Okay. And that's the why that's the reason I put it in. I'm not gonna lie. So it's one of the worst shirts. I don't even think of the squad they would have had at the time as well. 2000, 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Uh um, I'd, I'd be very surprised if you got this. James, you know what I'm gonna surprised. go. You know what I'm gonna go with because we'll we'll see we'll see. Do you want a clue? I tell you what I'll do. Right, I'll write down what my answer is. Yeah. And then, if off the back of the clue I'm right, then we know that this wasn't set up. So he <laughs> might not have even played at that time, but I'm gonna go with that person. What's the clue? So the clue is um, start of a new era. <laughs> That's a terrible clue. <laughs> doesn't doesn't really help me. No, it um, helps me to to a city fan. It does. All oh, right. Okay. I oh, went yeah. for Danny Tiato. Danny Tiato. That's a, I mean, that's, that's probably a fair shout. Problem. To be fair, that's probably a good one. That's yeah. what it reminds me of. That kit. That's that's right. like yeah. the city team with you know with players like yeah. that in it. Can I? So, Matt, I'll show you who it is. Hold on. Go who on. did you think I'd go for, Aaron? Who did I? Think? So I thought, do you want me to show him and then I'll say? No, you go say on. first who you thought I'd go for. So I thought he would have gone for Sean Golter. I thought that was a standout one for 100%. No. Yeah. One um, actually, as well, but... yeah, he actually went for Sean Wright Phillips. Gold was in that. I didn't even realise. Gold was in that <laughs> picture. Actually, Sean Wright Phillips. Um, That's why early this. on, when you put a picture up that was Sean Golter, I said Sean Wright Phillips because I knew they'd both. Yeah, worn that shirt right. at some point. Worn that shirt at some point, yeah. Um, so Millwall like? three two that look, at Millwall. That looks do we like. Think, do we think those socks that, make that, that worse? That kit or better? I think it probably makes it worse. make it a little bit better. I think it makes it a little bit better, but it looks like a dad's hugging his son there, isn't it? Like yeah. <laughs> but, but for me, that so this game, I'm pretty certain was um, Millwall away. We won 3-2 when Sean Wright Phillips scored in the 83rd minute. And um, it was like he was just starting to come through. Bubble. And yeah. and the yeah. thing is, I will always see, when I said start of a new era, obviously Sean Wright Phillips did really well for us, then went Chelsea. Yeah, Sean Wright Phillips came back to us. He was our last signing probably about five days. No, maybe about two weeks before we got bought out by the... Uh, by our current owners, Shame, so he yeah. was kind of like the start of a new era. It was three two. I'm just looking it up now. What what minute did you say, Sean Wright Phillips? Eight, uh, about eighty eighty third, eighty fourth, if eighty third minute. There it is. No, so exactly. there you go. There's your city. And, and I can also tell you. I can't tell you the date to be honest with you. I can tell you because I know it was a horrible evening game in December, fourth of December. There you go. Do you know what? <laughs> to say to say you started supporting in 2008, you've done some research. <laughs> he's, he's really knuckled down on his history. <laughs> yeah. Now that's a uh, fair play, fair play for that one. But but it's no, funny when you think back. We were playing Millwall. <laughs> I 
That's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, James, you didn't get that one right. So, let's move no. on to the next one. This is the 2008-2009 home shirt. Okay. Oh. Ooh. This Ooh. Is, I'm, I'm, you should get this one. I think you should get yeah. this one. Thomas yeah, I, mentioned someone, I, I mentioned someone earlier on, and that's what it reminds me of, naturally. There's oh, so yeah. many in this kit, though. Who Dude. did so? Who was that? I mentioned Stephen Island earlier on. Nah, I, I get that. <laughs> but this this kit reminds me of if 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 I'm being honest, the whole Thomas Cook thing. Although That's actually, true. a few of our more recent players wore this very very briefly. There are two yeah. players that Thomas Cook always reminds me of. So James, I think this might have always been the Kiki Musampa era as well. Remember Sitter, the uh, Dutch winger. Um, we all do, Bianchi. yeah. Sunji High might have played in this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with though. Posh Spice is a slapper. <laughs> she takes it in the eye, and when she's shagging bedroom, she thinks of Sunji High. I'm gonna go he with. Of, he was thinking of Posh Spice. Yeah, yeah I can't myself. I'm gonna go with Rubinho on this one. Did Rubinho wear that? He would have wore that, wouldn't he? Thomas Cook, yeah. no. Oh yeah, I think he would have wore Thomas Cook, but I think it would have been the year or two after we had Thomas Cook for quite a while. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't think he was there that season. Yeah, um, so we weren't in Europe, so we used Thomas no. Cook to go on holidays in the summer. Rubino came two thousand and nine, so it would have been after this yeah. season. Yeah. Um, okay, so unfortunately, James, you're wrong. So it was, in fact, Donner. Oh. See, the no, two players for me, again, is, is Sean Wright Phillips or Richard Dunn in this shirt. The, the own goal machine. Is it? Most own goals in the Premier League. Do you know, it's really funny because I, I, I get that Richard Dunn, obviously, in he kind of like was from the old era into the new era. Um, and he won, I think, play with the season for us, like five years on the bounce or something. Um, and like I had one or two when I put up my t- greatest of all time and whatever, people have said they can't believe Richard Dunn's not in there. And I'm like, I was never that much of a big fan of Richard Dunn, honestly. He was, <laughs> just because he won play with the season at Manchester City five years in a row does not mean he was a good footballer. No, that just means he was the best of a bad bunch. Yeah. Pretty much. But... So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, zero for two so far, James. So, we'll move on to the last one. And this is he won't sure. get this either. <laughs> we'll see. It was this one. Um, so this is the 2011 to 2012 home shirt. Obviously, this is the kit that City won their first Premier League title in. Um, I think you lot were in. You lot were probably at Sunderland and saw the Sunderland fans doing this. Story about that day. So I was in. I was in a pub in Reddish. It's no longer there. Called the Fir Tree. Um, one half was wearing, uh, was watching City. One half was watching United. Um, and I remember our game finished, and we we're all celebrating, and then all turning around, trying to look through this little gap in the bar, trying to watch the City game. And yeah, it just it all crumbled from there. All crumbled, and it was, I, I, I you know, supported United for a very long time, so that is probably still the worst day. I, I think that'll be the worst ever day I'll ever have supporting Manchester United. Yeah, it was I, I can... I, all those fears like of Manchester City winning the league and the way you did it. Like if you won it ten point, like you won it last season, miles away from us, it means nothing that. But on the last day of the season, when we we think we've done enough and you score that goal, you know, ninety three minutes twenty seconds, I'll never forget that number. I'll actually never forget that number because, like. Burnt into my into my memory. Oh, you know what? Our current current tops got it in the back. Yeah, yeah, and that's the um, typeface. The typeface on the back of your shirt is in sort yeah. of memory behind it and stuff. So yeah. Do you know what? It, it's like I will never, ever, 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 ever forget that day. Um, I can I can even go back to when we lost. I I can remember the last eight games. I can remember we lost to Arsenal on a Sunday, three one, and we thought that that was it. I think United had eight or nine point lead um and this is city that flop everything um and then carlos tevez returned and on the wednesday we played wigan and it was carlos tevez's first game back from his 
long-term sabbatical. His golf um, and then from then onwards, we won every single game with him and Aguero up top, Zeko coming on occasionally. And when it got to the last day of the season, to us, all we had to do, I think, was beat QPR and we win the league. If we got a draw and you drew or lost, I think we might have also won the league. Um, I can't remember the logistics now, but yeah. But no, I think actually we won. Didn't we win on goal difference? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, if we drew and you drew, same thing. But yeah. I, we were going to, I said to my mum, like, there's only place, one place I'm watching this. I need to go over and watch this with my dad. He wasn't, he wasn't that well by that point. And I said, but you don't have to. And what you need to, it could get quite emotional. And at that point, I probably didn't know how emotional it could get because we'd never won anything. We won the FA Cup, so I'd actually seen how emotional I was the year before when we beat you in the semi, then won the FA Cup. Um, but beating you in the semi was more emotional than winning the final, to be honest with you. Um, and then we went 1-0 up, half-time, great. And then second half starts, and absolute shit show. Um and next minute, it's 2-1. It's then Joey Barton, I don't... Still to this day, has he got a soft spot for City? I don't know, because what... Joey Barton had a complete meltdown. Um, <laughs> and then when we got the um, the second, I think it was like the 90th minute. So, yeah, but so even when we got, yeah, when we got that, it was like, I was still like, it's too late. This isn't good enough. And then when that third goal, oh my god like and from that point like i said it was it was tears just as i'd stopped crying they'd go to an interview with vincent company crying again my dad who was not never showed his emotions he's got tears in his eyes my missus is looking at me thinking what the <laughs> is going on right and and um i will say the way we won that league that season that is why since then we've won another four because if we can do what we did in that game in the champions league, right. We'll go on a run because it's like since then three of our four titles we've won since then in January, we haven't been top. We've we, in that game that day, we created a DNA that it yeah. does not matter if we are behind, we play till the final whistle, which actually is Man United. We play yeah. till the final whistle of the final day. And it's just, I will never forget that day. That day is, I mean, it was great seeing the United lot, but to be frank with you, I couldn't care less. It was about us to me. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's, that's how it should always be um, for yourselves. Not obviously getting one over on us, but um, so yeah, the question is, James, who does this serve in mind? <laughs> but, 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 but just to quick, quickly, based on that, there should only be one name. Well, well, yeah. yeah. See, you know what I was going to ask? Did Hargreaves wear this? For Sitter? Uh, no, he, he, he was probably there, but he probably never wore it. <laughs> he was probably injured. <laughs> yeah. but, well, by the way, he talks on BT Sport. He'd never played for City. Well, I don't think he actually did. Yeah, probably not. Same as Robwell. <laughs> yeah. Well, off off the back of what was, despite the fact you're a City fan, a, a quite heartwarming story, I will say Aguero for this one. See, you, you would think that, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. You'd probably also think Balotelli. I, was, David, I had Balotelli written down as well. But, but, David, David Silva, Vincent Company, but, Dabaletta. That, uh, so Dabaletta you know, scored the first goal on that day as well. But who scored the yeah, second goal on that day? Who scored the equaliser? So many, so many names you could have thrown at me, James, and Daps went for this guy. Oh. Edin Dzeko. I mean, and he popped up before, and he even said him during the explanation, uh, talking about that day. So it was a tough one. That I'll give you that. That was a tough one. Uh, uh, listen, if, it's a city quiz, and I got nothing. That's I'm happy with that. That's fine. Do you know what? You, Do you know what? Feel happy that you got none. I reckon. If I could have any player back at City right now, when that actually that's a lie, I'd have David Silva. But what we need more than anything right now is is him. A yeah. player that's willing to sit on the bench and understand that some games don't need an out and out target man, but he can come on and do what he did with us for so long. I think we only let him go because I think actually sometimes some clubs think, do you know what, this guy actually does deserve to be 
the number one somewhere because he, you will never be the number one at, at City. But he was yeah. unbelievable. He's a fan favourite. And I don't know why that shirt reminded me of him, but sometimes it's just weird. Mm. That's that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Sometimes it just that's reminds you of a that. random player. That's mm. it. <clears throat> a great record against Man United as well. Jacko uh, even yeah. scored against last season in the Europa League for uh, Roma twice. He did. He did. And he actually scored my favourite goal of all time against Man United. Not because of what he did, but because of the pass to him. Is it uh, the 6 1? The David Silver yeah. chest and volley. Yeah, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Great yeah. yeah. But it was, it was great, great game. Mm, I, I'm different on that one. Should have been 10. Should have been 10. That's what they are. That's what they say, but it wasn't. So we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Shirt Impressions, James Goose Egg on that one, unfortunately. But I think he'll be happy with that because it's Man City and he's. <laughs> You know, Definitely. don't want to get into that sort of thing. So we are going to get into the favourite part of the show, the bit that everyone wants, wants to be involved in. This is going to be Desert Island Kits here on Talking Kits. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Kit. You're with James and we've got Daps from Never A Foul. Talking Man City on this episode, our very first you know, specialist episode, um, and you know who better than Daps talks well on football, knows his stuff. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a great episode. So we're going to finish off with some desert island kits. This is where we send our guest off to a desert island, and we want them to give us a home shirt, uh, an away shirt, and a third or wild car shirt that they're going to take on a desert island with them. And at the end, we ask them to tell us which one they would keep out of the three. So you know, the funny thing is, tomorrow morning, I actually fly out to the Maldives as well. Oh, there you go. Oh, and I'm not taking any of these. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would if you had them, though. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it straight away, then. So this is your home shirt. I'm going to get it up for This is, if I'm right by my notes, this is the Manchester City... 91 to 92 home shirt. Why have you chosen this one then, Daps? Because this is the first football shirt that I remember. Okay. okay. Um, Keith Curl. Um, yeah. And who I, I was a big, big... I don't know why, because my first my first memory of football was 1990 Gaza crying. That I can't really remember anything before that. Um, yeah. This was just after then. But I like the fact that I like the pattern in the background. I like the simplicity of the badge. The collar is one of the small badges, small collars again, like the Euro 96 one. But I really, really like those two black lines on the sleeve. It was just something a little bit different because like the burgundy top that we spoke about er earlier, I think was probably 1990 to 91. This was the follow on the year after. And ultimately, if you take the stripes off, it's the same but blue as the burgundy one. But then you put the stripes on that little detail was like, just stood out to me. I always remember Keith Curl wearing this top. Just Yeah. So, yeah, like you say, it's got the sort of those uh, lines. And it looks like the pattern in the shirt is those lines again. It's the lines, yeah. 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 Also, it works quite well. The buttons and the collar are very similar to England's 1990 top. I was going to say that, yeah. So people listening to the audio podcast, if if you're trying to picture the shirt, it's very much like the England third shirt from the 90 World Cup, yeah. uh, sort of the World in Motion video one. Um, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice kit, very Man City, very Man City brother Umbro. Uh, definitely stands out. Obviously, I didn't put this one in the um, Kit Simons because I know obviously knew you picked it. Uh, but it would have been in there. I definitely would have had that one in there without a doubt. I like Do you the, know the other uh, thing like that's quite interesting on. looking at this? Go on. Go on. It's it's sky blue. Yeah. But the stri- the kind of the is actually electric blue. Mm. Uh yeah, okay. Do just, you know this... so so it's you can actually see where they got the electric blue from on this on this top because the detail is actually Electric blue, black blue, yeah, no, that's yeah, and also the blue that's on the Kappa kit as well. Actually, that's what I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like there is a theme there running through, but 
I'm, I'd be surprised if this is this is the reason why they used it on nah, the cafe. Not, not a chance. <laughs> yeah. James, uh, what are you thinking yeah, of this choice? I, was gonna say, I like I like the retro umbo sign. Like if if it was obviously we're talking about a modern day desert island, that retro umbo umbro stands out and that again that badge without the without anything around it, without a shield around it. Yeah. Really nice. Um again, be curious to see why they decided to put that on the on the sleeves there, but it does it does work. I like the collar on that one. It's quite a nice, quite a nice choice. And it's not, it's not one you see City fans wearing. To be honest, is a retro kit. Not that I'm aware of. Um, no, I want to try and find it. To be honest, after it's, it's, it, yeah. it's a nice kit. Yeah, definitely nice. Okay, so that was your home shirt. Moving on to your away shirt. That you've chosen this one, and this is the Manchester City '94 to '96 away shirt. Again, it's just obviously we've seen it earlier on. So it makes sense that you would have uh, chosen this one because he was wearing it. Probably the same size as this as well. Um, so yeah, why have you chosen this one? Um, I think this this shirt is probably this shirt probably signifies as a child when I was most connected to the club and football, not just the club. To be honest, like like I said earlier, it, football was my absolute life. Like even when we. When we went on holiday, I would be at so the picture in where I'm stood watching the TV with my dad. That was actually yeah. in a ledger center in Portugal that I got membership to for the week while we were on holiday, so I could basically play football every single day on there. It was just football was everything to me, um, yeah. and yeah, it just just because of that, I was so connected. I was at Main Road every other week, and just it, it's the era that I remember the most. That's cool. It's yeah. um yeah so. The, the kit itself, if you, if you listen to like again the audio podcast, it's black and red stripes. And there's two sort of grey blocks on on sort of either shoulder, and the brother is in its own sort of like block of um, black. Yeah. What's the? Can I ask what the white is? Is that like netting? What is that? No, it was it was it was normal material, but it was made to look yeah. like netting. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Me and Aaron have had a conversation about this before, right? And you know how Umbro used to be really, really good at kind of creating one kit design and then using it for multiple clubs yeah and chelsea had a kind of gray one with orange okay it was pretty much the same if you imagine if you had photoshop open and you could just change the colors in a couple of places that yeah chelsea had one the same but that was when chelsea were a lot better than us only just <laughs> only just well no that um, was when they started buying play they started getting the italians play. over and stuff mark, I think. Hughes, I think yeah. mark hughes was there then as yeah well, I think, dennis wise yeah um one thing about this kit that it, the collar reminds me of the manchester united shirt from the same time 100 percent king uh um, sort of what we've all trafford in the background the king can that one uh, and uh can can chelskis can chelskis yeah in his first season there paulins yeah uh, just that colour just reminds me of, of it, but yeah, yeah I, I remember. Sure. City, I remember. It reminds me of this ginger lad from school. This kit, this ginger lad used to wear it all. The what time. curly was? Uh, no, <laughs> don't tell you a story about curly Watts. You can. So be. out in Manchester, one time I was around nineteen, about eighteen, nineteen. Out in Manchester, there was a bar called Mutt's Nuts. Right, and he used to do Friday night. He used to do pound. Like what they called um, cheeky vimptos and all that, and rum and everything. Used to go there, get absolutely smashed. Walking from that venue to another club, um, past uh, the Midland Hotel, we see um, Curly Watts walking. Like, curly, 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 and everyone is like, "All right, lads, how you doing? How you doing, lads?" I was around, going, "Yeah, you blue cunt." And I'm what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do you know what? It's a term in Manchester. So. As Manchester guys, right? So when my mum first got with my stepdad and we used to come up there, um in fact, Aaron, what were your first decks? My first what? Record yeah. decks, vinyl. Oh, do you know what? I'm not actually a DJ DJ, so I've never actually had oh, owned okay. any. Oh, no, so so my dad, um, my dad worked for a company. Well, was the sales director for a company called uh, Sound Lab. Oh, well, right, they were yeah. called Altai, but Sound Lab was their decks, and they were out Salford. I remember oh, right. when I was like about five up there, and we 
we'd come up to meet him after work and we would just literally kind of got a taxi to their the estate on the edge of Salford and um just around the corner from Granada Studios it was and um as we pulled up in the taxi broad daylight on a Saturday uh, another car pulls in five guys jump out all in balaclavas look at us set fire to the car in front of us while looking at us jump in another car drive off I'm like oh my dad was like oh yeah yeah it's, it's normal <laughs> um but but no, we used to stay at the Midlands when we'd come up there for weekends because he still lived up there. We still lived down. And um, can you guys remember the Dutch Pancake House? Oh, mate, I love the Dutch Pancake I don't remember house. that. Yeah, I used to go there all the time. Where the you Dutch could get a savoury pancake. Oh. Yeah, chicken, cor- chicken curry on pancakes. Honestly, amazing. Wow. But it honestly, it was amazing. It was on the cor- it was on the corner. Right opposite yeah. the Midland, like directly there. You had the casino on the edge of the corner, then directly opposite you had you had the Dutch pancake house. You know what? Yeah. If you Google it, you'll find stuff on it because it was quite well, legendary back then. Yeah, we'll we'll put a picture up of it on our socials at Talking yeah. Kit. Uh, we'll definitely show it. I used to go all the time. Uh, it's it's a shame. I think it's like offices now. Knocked it all yeah. down. It's like yeah. offices now. There's loads. Of, there's so many things I can remember from Manchester. The other thing was I went to see Honey Shrunk I, when I still lived in the <laughs> south. I went to see. Honey, I shrunk the kids at the uh, Odeon just along from the Dutch Pancake House as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, random, you, random facts. Some great stuff from uh, from the old days in Manchester there. Um, James, what do you think about this kit, though, overall? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a nice kit. Is this the away kit, did you say? Yeah. Awake. I use um, away kit, yeah. I agree with you about the collar, and it's the red... Red, white, and black, isn't it? So it's very sort of yeah. it looks Manchester United like. I like that, yeah. you know, thinking of Umbro, because we went to an Umbro um, sort of, what would you call it, Aaron? When we went to that exhibition. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't realize that Umbro was like a Manchester based was it? company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What, like Joe Bloggs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like who, whoever it was, they when they came up with the design and stuff, like Umbro is a Manchester uh, based I company. I, I, yeah. I do like that, like a, a local team with a local manufacturer and stuff. So that's always top points. Brother there as well. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not too sure about the, 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 the strips on there. The netting's weird, isn't it? That, it yeah, other than the netting on there, that netting effect. It's a really nice kit. And it's traditional. Yeah. The red and black stripes is a bit of a traditional city thing as well. I think it's my favourite sort of city away shirt. If you had to pick one, definitely the red and black stripes. I'd I'd say is the one I like to see you in most. I think. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's good. Proper I'll send night. you some pictures. Yeah, <laughs> wants to okay. see you in it. I want to see you in it. That. <laughs> um, it's just yeah. I, I'm surprised you didn't mention the sort of um, shield around the badge. James, you, you're a stick Again, that, doesn't but... look te- doesn't look terrible in black, and it it no. needs it. I think on a kit like that, but yeah. Yeah, it's the netting that takes away from it on that one. Yeah, ah, fair, fair enough, fair enough. All right, then that. So moving into your last shirt, and this is your third shirt. Oh no, sorry, it's not the Tango Ice Blast. Hey. <laughs> no, it is the Man City um, 1920 third shirt, Puma. So it's obviously the 2020. yellow. The yellow going into the orange. Um, yeah, what's what's the thinking behind this one? So, you said Desert Island. Okay. <laughs> when you said oh, Desert okay. Island, I thought of this straight away, right? Um, <laughs> and with this, I got a pair of... The strange thing is, I wore... Right, so City, I don't know if we... I think we wore this maybe in... Maybe in the Champions League once. This was our third kit. Um yeah. But I liked it, um, but I don't think I've ever worn it outside of the house. I, I, I had a pair of Adidas shorts that are the same colour as the top. And literally, that is all I would wear. It would get washed in between. Um, when I got home from work or whatever, when um, just lounging around in the house. But it's just, I really like the, I like, I like the, the way it blended into the other thing. I, I like bright, loud things. So this was just, and... When I spoke earlier about collars, yeah, this is the perfect shape of collars for me. I like perfectly round, round yeah. with the with yeah. the with the thing round it. Now I really like this. It's bright. It's positive. Bit of, almost feels like a bit of vitamin vitamin D in my face. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> and sure, the badge sure. is actually just 
You know what? We always do it now, though, don't we? Our badge is very prominent and yeah. old school. Definitely. Um, James, nice yeah, um, I like the I like the black collar. If we're gonna, ha- it's, so, it's so bright, and then you've got the black collar with it. I don't know whether you know with the badge. I know it sounds weird. If the badge was black as well, that might have added to it a little bit. You know, like Dortmund do on their kits and stuff like that. Sometimes. Yeah, that's interesting. Rather than having the traditional colours, I get obviously they've kept just the traditional badge. But like, if that was black as well, that might have added to it. Do you know what? A hundred percent. Like, so it matched the puma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, and it matches the collar Black as well, and, and the sponsor. I'm not mad at it. It's not, it's not the best kit I've ever seen. It's not terrible. Um, it's a third kit. It's going to have to be different colours, isn't it, to be a little bit more different and stand out ish. Um, yeah, you're not it's, mad at it, but you're no, not mad. You no, know it is. You know it is. It's quite a modern yeah. kit, and I know you you prefer the modern kit stats, and that's fine. But I'm like. Where's the retro? I want the retro in there, and I just, I just don't see it. But no, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite a good kit. I can imagine, like you say, people on holiday are, are, are wearing this kit. Desert Island, uh, yeah, yeah, and they're, for sure, they're, they're out and about in, in, in this with their uh, flip flops and socks. If they're city fans, and um, yeah, wearing this as well. But it's yeah. not, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I'd give it like a five out of ten if I needed to mark it down. But yeah, yeah, for me, I'm totally different to you two. Like. <laughs> <laughs> he flip flops out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love the fact that they've, they've stuck to the original colours on the badge. I hate the fact that kits now are just blend like the same colour as the sponsor or or the manufacturer. Like, you know, United have three kits. Only one of them has got the proper badge on it, uh, which really annoys me. Which is always the home shirt. Uh, I'd like to see all three kits have it. It's very nineties that and very sort of. Um, you know, when, when when football shirts weren't such fashion accessories, so I like the fact the badge is like that. I do like the black collar as well, but yeah, it it really does just remind me of um, Tango Ice Blast. I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah, you know what? I like that. The, the, there's only one player. This if you put this kit up and said, "Who does this remind you of?" There's only one player it reminds me of, and that's Raheem Sterling. Yeah, I was and thinking that, Sterling. Yeah, yeah, I probably Sterling, would have yeah, got that one right. Yeah. Yeah, I would have got that one right. About time. <laughs> uh, but no, the shot, the shot's quite nice in it as well. Actually, the mat obviously they go down gradient into the uh, into the, the top. Um, so if you had to pick one, home away or third daps, which one are you going for? If you had to pick one of them to keep on your desert island. Away. Although I want the home, I want to find the home. Yeah. But you would pick that one. I, that's I one I got. Away, I, don't, yeah. I thought you would pick the away, to be fair. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that was your Desert Island kits. Some good choices. I have to say so, even for a City fan, not too bad. Um, but no, well done. You've done, you've, you've done well there, Dax. You've done well. Cheers, mate. Thank you. You are, uh, you are listening, of course, and watching Talking Kits. <laughs> So, unfortunately, that is the end of this episode, episode six of the Talking Kit Podcast. I want to say a big thanks to Daps for joining us. It's been it's been a pleasure, mate. It's been a long time coming. We've done a lot of yeah. stuff on your channel. It's about time. You know, you've done a couple of strip downs, actually, which um, I've not been able to be a part of. And, you, you know, you it's hard to keep you quiet. James was quite a, quite, quite a bit. <laughs> no, we love but, it. Oh, it's imagine how my teachers felt. felt. Uh, I yeah. can only imagine. I imagine but you know that's what you want you know what people coming on and don't say nothing you know it's been good talking man city with you i've been able to reminisce about the 90s and sort of when we were better than you <laughs> so we could lord it over you but um no uh, i hope you've enjoyed it mate and um, i have i have i've been looking forward to it i love the shows um i love shows that are more than just talking about football yeah um well, that's what we're so about. yeah no and and this is my last podcast for two weeks so i'm well, looking forward to it enjoy it i'm glad you've enjoyed it then um but no we'll, we'll see more of you obviously i, I imagine you're going to be in the strip down uh, a lot more um i hope so yeah um we'll speak to you soon and enjoy your holiday i hope, you, I hope it's good. and uh yeah we'll, we'll no doubt speak to you soon james i'll no doubt talk to you very soon as well um on the strip down we've got another strip down coming up soon and obviously like i say we've got loads of guests coming up on the podcast uh, some specialised episodes as well as some sort of more generic featured around kits. Um, so yeah, get involved in the show like we like we say uh, at Talking Kit and everything. Subscribe to the channel, like the videos, 
get involved. Let us know your Desert Island kits. We may feature them one day. You never know. Uh, but that is it for this uh, this week's episode. James, got anything to say? No, just follow the channels, follow everything. Follow me on Instagram, Counterfeit Crookie. Uh, you can get all my <laughs> upcoming ga- uh, gigs, etc., on there. And why not uh, give Lafayette a follow as well, uh, which is a night I help run in Deansgate, Manchester for comedy. Definitely do that. Don't forget also to check out Never a Foul. And yeah, we will be back very, very soon. Make sure that you are definitely keep it talking kit. Okay.